It's time to see triangulation in action. In this demo, you'll see how adding test cases one at a time gradually causes the system under test to coalesce. We'll pick up where we left in the demos in Module 2, but this time we drop down to the unit level. If you recall Mike Cohn's test pyramid, most tests should be unit tests, and indeed, in this scenario, there's no need for a full systems test. The feature is going to be serialization of a simple web token, which is an open standard for authorization data commonly used together with the OAuth protocol. In the Module 2 demos, I made one major shortcut. I hard-coded the username as foo. It's time to rectify that situation, and in order to do that, I'll need to add authentication and authorization information to the running journal API. The protocol OAuth and the token format Simple Web Token are good matches for RESTful APIs. In this and the next demo, I'm going to triangulate a Simple Web Token class that can serialize and deserialize claims about the user, such as the username. A simple web token is an independent class implementing parsing and formatting logic, so it's a great candidate for triangulation. There's no reason to perform a full system test, so instead of sticking with the existing acceptance tests project, I add a new unit tests project to the solution and add the xUnit library to the new project. A good TDD trick is to start with a so-called icebreaker test a simple test that mostly serves as a trigger to create the SUT class. The simple web token class should encapsulate a set of claims, so I'd like to verify that it's possible to read it as a sequence of claims. As the red squiggly lines under the simple web token class tells us, the class doesn't yet exist, so I use the built-in refactoring tools to create the class in the production project. The test now compiles, so I can run the test to verify that it's failing as expected. To make it pass, I must make the simple web token class implement ienumerable of claim. Now all tests pass. However, when we consider the implementation, the not implemented exception strongly suggests that we're not yet done. Another test is required to fix that. I'd like to verify that I can read the claims I add to a simple web token instance, so I write a test called such yields injected claims. First, I must declare what I expect, which is an array of three claims with the types and values foo, bar, bass, cooks, cooks, and corch. Secondly, I pass these claims into the constructor of the simple web token class. And thirdly, I verify that the expected array is equal to the sequence produced by the SUT itself. Lastly, since there's also a non-generic overload of the getEnumerator method, I add an assertion that verifies the exact same thing, but expressed using the non-generic overload. Right now the test doesn't compile because the simple web token doesn't contain a constructor that takes one argument. This prompts me to add a constructor taking a params array of claims. It doesn't break the existing test that used the default constructor, because now the existing test will just compile into this constructor with an empty array. Now that the code compiles, I run the tests and notice that the new test fails catastrophically because of this not implemented exception. While the test doesn't pass, this doesn't count as a proper failing test because the assertion is never evaluated. Before I write the correct implementation of the getEnumerator method, I must write a wrong implementation in order to verify that I wrote the correct assertion. Thus, I return an empty sequence. When I run the tests, I see that the test does indeed fail, but now it fails as expected on this line of code. Now it's OK to add the correct implementation. First, I add a backing field for the injected claims and assign them from the constructor. Secondly, I return the enumerator from the backing field. The tests still fail because of the second assertion that hits the non-generic overload of getEnumerator. Once more, I must first implement it incorrectly to see that the assertion verifies the correct condition. It does, because the test now fails as expected on the second assertion, and only then can I correctly implement the method. The tests now pass. Both of the tests I just wrote verified the direct output of the SUT, but there hasn't been a lot of stimulus. You can consider this a warm-up to the real triangulation, which starts now. The simple web token class must be able to serialize itself into the correct format defined by the simple web token standard. A very common way to serialize an object to a string is to use its toString method. 
so I write a test called toString returns correct result. The SUT is a simple web token instance with a claim with the type foo and the value bar. To apply stimulus, I invoke the toString method and subsequently verify that the result was the string foo equals bar. The simple web token standard defines the format as a series of name value pairs, very much like a URL query string. The test fails as expected, so I override the toString method to return the hard coded string foo equals bar. This implementation passes all the tests. Obviously, this isn't yet the correct implementation, so I need to add more test cases to make the implementation more general. While I could do that by writing new test methods, part of the XUnit library called XUnit extensions contains support for parameterized tests. Instead of the fact attribute, a parameterized XUnit test uses the theory attribute. It enables me to add one or more inline data attributes which contain the test parameters. As test case input for the test case I want to extend, I need an array of claims, but since I can only use constants and attributes, I'll need to settle with supplying an array of strings that I can then pass over the pipe character. After the claim values, I also supply the expected outcome of the test. These values are simply the values which are already hard-coded in the unit test. I'm simply moving them to the inline data attribute. To capture the inline data values, I add a string array parameter for the claim, keys and values, and a string parameter for the expected result. In order to pass the claim values into the simple web token constructor, I must convert the string array to claim instances. First, I split each string over the pipe character. Secondly, I create a new claim instance from the resulting array. Finally, I convert the sequence into an array and pass it into the simple web token constructor. I also replace the hard-coded value foo equals bar with the expected parameter value. This is the same test case as before, only expressed in a different way. The tests still pass. With the test method expressed as a parameterized test, it's easy to add new test cases. The first test case I want to add is the degenerate test case where there are no claims. This should result in the empty string. As the test failure demonstrates, that's not currently the case, so I change the implementation of the toString method, using the any method and the ternary conditional to return the correct value in both test cases. Now all tests pass once again. The toString implementation still doesn't seem general enough, so I add a new test case with two claims, one with foo as the claim type and bar as the value, and another with bass as the claim type and cux as the value. The expected result should be foo equals bar and bass equals cooks. As expected, the new test case doesn't pass. In the toString method, I decide to implement the method using link, so for each claim I select a string created from the claims type and value. If there are no claims at all, the resulting sequence may be empty, so I define the default as the empty string. This sequence of name value strings can finally be aggregated with the ampersand character. This implementation passes all the tests and looks correct to boot.